How many of you have been out there on the road, about to pull into a caravan park, ready to reverse on site, hubby stays in the car, wife gets out the back to give some directions, and then all of a sudden, everyone around you starts to get their scorecards ready. Doing a towing course can help you avoid being the afternoon's entertainment. On a towing course, you learn all those reversing skills in an environment where there's no audience and nothing to run into. But there's more to towing than just reversing, isn't there, John? Absolutely. Find yourself a nationally recognised course that covers the following subjects. Hitching and unhitching, safety checks, emergency braking, towing forward and reverse, and road craft skills. What the course also gives you is the ability to communicate with each other using the same language. A little bit like marriage counselling. You want to get to the point where you're confident in your own driving ability and also confident in your partners. Having a large open controlled space where you can learn and practice a variety of skills will prepare you for when you get out on the road to have a safe and enjoyable journey working as a team. One of the most common scenarios we see is the husband's the dominant driver and does most of the driving. If something happens to him, the wife might need to tow. This is not the time to learn how to tow. You're already stressed about him and now you're putting yourself in a very uncomfortable position. When you're looking for a towing course, ideally it should have both a theory and a practical component. The theory component should be able to be done in your own home, in your own time, and the practical component should be a full day. By having that full day of practice, it allows you to learn and practice those skills that will be very necessary for when you're out on the road. Every day you're out there with your trailer, you will find yourself in a position where you have to straight line reverse. It could be the caravan park, the boat ramp, or even the tip. Reversing your trailer in a straight line isn't as simple as just keeping the steering wheel in one position. Using your mirrors, gentle movements on the steering wheel and keeping your speed slow will have you reversing that trailer with ease. The key to doing a straight line reverse is firstly to have some very good mirrors. You need to be able to see down both sides of the trailer, the driver's side and the passenger side. What you're focusing on is the very rear end of your trailer. If it starts to appear more in the driver's side, you turn that way. If it starts to appear more in the passenger's side, you turn towards that mirror. And it makes it very, very simple. The van will go back in a straight line. The driver needs to react quickly with small movements, no more than half a turn of the steering wheel. Nobody expects an emergency braking situation, but you can plan for it and you can prepare for it by learning how to adjust your brake controller for varying situations. In the morning when the brakes are cold, they will react differently to how they do in the afternoon. You will need to adjust your brakes accordingly. This is not a set and forget system. When it comes to adjusting the trailer brakes, we want to make sure that it's just right. But what do I mean by just right? Well, if the output on the electric brake controller is not high enough, when we brake heavily, the trailer will push the back of the car up and our braking distance will increase significantly. If I adjust the brake controller so it's too high, the trailer brakes may lock up and it will definitely pull down the back of the car. So what do we do to get it just right? We need to make sure that the car and the trailer pull up evenly. When it comes to emergency braking, that's exactly what I want you to do. I want you to press that brake on the vehicle as hard and as fast as you can. With the trailer brakes adjusted correctly, the whole rig will pull up nice and straight. The last thing we want you to do is to swerve, because that could lead to a whole range of other problems. So by understanding how they work and learning to feel how the brakes work in different situations, you can have a good, safe holiday. When it comes to stopping distances, physics doesn't lie. We will wash off half our speed in the last quarter of our stop. So that at 60 k's, that last four meters, we're still doing 30 kilometers an hour. So it's important that the brakes are adjusted absolutely perfectly so you get the best stopping distance every time. 
What we've demonstrated here is only the braking distance. When we factor in human reaction time, which experts tell us is a second and a half, at 60 kilometres an hour, that is an extra 25 metres that you've just travelled even before you get your foot on the brake. Well, that was a very enlightening exercise. The first just used the car as a control. We did three runs at 60 kilometres an hour. This gave us an average stopping distance of 12 metres for just the vehicle. The next run we did, we adjusted the caravan brakes so they were working perfectly. Once again, we did three stops. The average at 60 kilometres an hour now was 19 metres. The third set of runs we did, we wound the caravan brakes off completely so they were not contributing to the stopping effort. The average stopping distance for that run was 26 metres. When you consider that there was seven metres difference between each stop, that is a huge amount. That's the difference between stopping at the back of a vehicle or pushing right through the front of it. First thing in the morning at the caravan park, hitching up is one of those stressful times. So to alleviate the stress, what we're going to do is we're going to put the wife in the driver's seat and put the husband out the back. The reason why we do that is because generally, she's not real cluey about where the car's going to go and quite frankly, he's not listening anyway. To reduce those stress levels that we talked about earlier, I'm going to stand in a nice safe position next to the drawbar. Julie can see me in the rear vision mirror. She's got a driver's window down so she can hear me and I'll be able to make some nice clear signals in front of my face. So left, go right, stop or come straight back. That way there's little confusion and I can see exactly which way the car is going to come towards the hitch. I will also give her some approximate measurements so she knows how far she's got to run. Okay, Julie, can you see me okay? I'd like you to come straight back for me, please. Straight back, that's good. Go a little bit right for me, a little bit right. More, stop there. Turn the steering wheel right, hard right for me. That's good, you've got about a metre to come. Come back at that, that's great. Keep coming at that, excellent. About 300, stop. That's good, you've got about 150 mil to come. Keep coming at that, keep coming at that. And stop, excellent. Secure the vehicle there for me please. Okay, so what the driver needs to remember is to have the window open so you can hear the person. Clear vision in the mirror, so watching them the whole time and everything's slow. Listening to those directions and doing it nice and slow. And after listening to his directions, if everything goes wrong, it's his fault. We've already hooked the hitch up. So now in turn, we need to hook the chains up as well. The critical thing here is to make sure that the chains are only just long enough to reach across to the vehicle. Make sure that you use a rated shackle to hook the chains into the vehicle as well. Do them up nice and tight. No need to use a shift or anything like that. Once the chains are hooked up, that then forms a great basis for the hitch should it fail and it will land in that little cradle. That's why we've crossed the chains. Once we've done that, we can release the brake mechanism, take the jockey wheel out, then hook in our electrics. Remembering not to try and wiggle the pins, just push them straight in. If the vehicle's fitted with an Anderson plug like this one is, make sure that it's hooked up correctly as well. Once all that's in, don't forget, if the vehicle's got a breakaway lanyard, to hook that up as well. We've had a terrific day on the road today, starting off with a nice stress-free departure from the caravan park this morning, but we're now coming into the next stressful part of the day, and that's putting the caravan on site. I've got Julie just down the road, so what we're gonna go through is a few simple, easy tips that will help you put your caravan on site so you can have a terrific night as well. So Julie has sent me on ahead to scope out the site. I've checked it out. We could drive through if we wanted to, but that would be cheating. So I'm going to bring Julie up far enough up the track here so that we can do a nice right angle reverse onto the concrete slab.
I've made my way to the rear of the caravan and from here I'm going to give Julie a set of clear voice commands to enable us to get the caravan on site really easily. Now it doesn't matter who does the guiding or in fact it doesn't matter where they actually stand but in their mind's eye they're standing here with their right hand on the back corner of the caravan. Referencing to the driver's side of the car, if I want to push the caravan away from the driver's side, I would use the term push. If I want to pull it towards the driver's side, I'm going to use the term pull. So now, what do we need to do for the driver? Now I'm at the driver's side, I'm going to put my hand on top of the steering wheel. Julie's got her hands at quarter to three, which is the natural driving position. We're going to explain push and pull using just the steering wheel. So Julie, could you pull me into the car using the steering wheel? Excellent, push me out, pull me in, push me out, fantastic. So just to make sure you've got that, one more time, pull and push. Fantastic, so when I call for pull and push, you can use as much steering wheel as you need and I will direct you as required. Okay. Julie, we're about to reverse on site, so you the first movement is a pull movement. So you, could you go full lock pull, please? And start reversing for me very slowly. So push now for me, push. That's good. Pull now. Slowly, slowly, slow the car down for me. That's great. That's it, very, very nice. Excellent. Keep it at that. Keep it at that. Push now, push hard, push hard, push hard. Pull now. Push now, push hard. That's it. Pull now, pull. Push now, push hard, hard, hard as you can. Push hard. Keep the car slow, that's it. Keep it coming at that. Keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming, really good. About a metre to go, straighten the wheels up, and stop. 